Cape Cod Community College is a wonderful resource in our community. And did you know nearly 900 people, actually more than 900 people, have gone through the college's criminal justice program? There's an effort underfoot to connect alumni of that program together. And I'm pleased to welcome in studio some folks who are working hard to trying to make that happen. Uh, I am pleased to welcome in studio Susie Greenup. She is the coordinator of alumni uh, relations um, with the Cape Cod Community College Educational Foundation. That is a long title, Susie. It certainly is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Chief of uh, Yarmouth Police, Frank Fredrickson, uh, who's also a graduate of Cape Cod Community College uh, of, of the Criminal Justice Program, and Yarmouth Police. Uh, Deputy Chief Stephen Exaros, another uh, Cape Cod Community College alumni, graduate of the program, and I'm Sarah Colvin, also an alumni of Cape Cod Community <laughs> That's College. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. So um, let's talk a little bit first. Uh, I want to talk about um, kind of the challenges of connecting alumni. I know, um, you know, as we talked about, there's 900 uh, plus alumni that have gone through the criminal justice program, thousands more who have attended the school. Right. Um, and I know as an alumni, um, I'm connected with my radio station uh, friends, but certainly the larger college uh, community I've, I've kind of lost touch with. So talk to me a little bit, Susie, about the challenges of getting so many people together and why it's important uh, to connect the alumni. Well, Cape Cod Community College is a wonderful resource for the Cape. Um, it's a great option for many reasons for students who are coming out of high school, who might not know what they're going to do next and, and need some more time to mature or you know figure out a path. The college is an awesome place for that. It's also a great place for people who are changing careers or you know relocating to the Cape and need to get some extra training for a variety of reasons. Um, and one of the trends for community college graduates or people who have attended community colleges, and I need to talk about the, the definition of an alum in just a second so we have that uh, clear, but most of those people tend to remain local. They're out in our communities um, helping their communities and advancing their careers um, in, on the local scene. So just to let you know, an um, the definition of an alum of a community college, this is the definition that the state uses now, is someone who has taken at least one class. Oh, wow. Yep, at, at the school. Uh, most people tend to think of an alum as someone who's actually gotten an associate's or maybe even a certificate program. But to be more inclusive, uh, that's the definition now. Well, that's great. Uh, one of my coworkers, we were having a discussion earlier this morning, says, oh, well, like, too bad I can't count myself as an alum because I didn't graduate. Mm. So, Jay, you are an alum. You can be part of, of, of that group. Uh, yes. That, that's really exciting. And you asked about uh, the importance of getting people together to connect, to, to just know how many of your fellow alums are around, what they're doing. Um, it's a great networking, uh, you know, a great, great way to network if we can get alums together. Uh, we are going to, we have been planning um, to continue the alumni engagement through affinity groups. Last year we started with a networking night for nurses. This year it's the criminal justice community. Um, and not sure what's coming next, but uh, you can always find out by going to the college website and uh, the latest news is there. Great, capecod.edu, uh, very easy to yep, access uh, that absolutely. Cape Cod Community College website. So let's bring in our <laughs> uniformed officers, of course our high-ranking uniform officers, Chief of Yarmouth Police Frank Fredrickson and Deputy Chief uh, Stephen Xaros, and both who I just learned today are alumni of Cape Cod Community College. Mm -hmm. So Chief, let's start with you. Talk with me a little bit about you know why you decided to go to Four Seasons and tell me about your experience at the college. Well, uh, the Community College was such a gift that I didn't know at the time that really started my interest in furthering policing. Uh, it, it created a foundation for what we do today. And there's, there's an old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Some of the tenets we learned back in those simple classes, uh, police and community relations, those type of things, they still hold true today. And it allowed us to bring those forward and understand it better as we moved into the idea of community policing, which we know it today. And I think if anybody follows the Yarmouth Police, uh, we have done immense work in that, um, culminating in that we received the New England Community uh, Policing Award twice in the last four years. Uh, and it does go back to our very basic education. And fortunately, the both of us have received that same education at 
Cape Cod Community College. We also promote the college as best we can, but it's hard to compete with some of the uh, more uh, exciting four-year colleges with campus and city life and all that. But to get that sound, basic, affordable education, we encourage uh, a lot of our local students when we do our workshops, et cetera, to do just what we did. It's a great foundation to start off with. Great. And Deputy Chief, uh, you know, what, what was it that, uh, that got you to start going to Cape Cod Community College? That's a great question. I was born and raised in New Bedford, and oh, I really? had never been to the Cape. But God bless my aunt and uncle, um, Auntie Froso and <laughs> Uncle Steve, <laughs> they lived in Sandwich. I always wanted to be a police officer. I knew at a young age I had something in me that said I want to serve and protect. And uh, I found out about Four C's and they offered me a place to live. So I came to the Cape and right out of high school and lived with them in Sandwich and went to Four C's. And like the chief said, it built the foundation for where we are now. We are so proud of Four C's. We talk about it a lot. And um, there's a lot of good memories there. And uh, we always tell our young people, if you want to be involved in law enforcement, one of the smartest things to do First of all, is get educated, mm. it, but go to Four C's. It's 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 local, it's less expensive, and uh, you can get a degree in two years. Where at a four-year school, after two years, you do not have a degree. And one thing to keep in mind at the YPD, in order to take our test, just to get started and be considered, you have to have at least 60 college credits, or be a veteran, or be a police officer somewhere else. So. We don't just take people off the street. You have to have one of those three, three things to take our test. And you know that's those 60 credits from four C's can't be beat. So how valuable has the criminal justice program been, not to just your own education, but to sourcing officers to join the Yarmouth Police Department? Now, do you have four C's alumni on staff? We, we sure do, and we're proud of that. And out of we have 61 police officers now, and I think it might be in the high 50s that have college degrees. Many have associates, many have uh, bachelor's degrees, and many, like the chief and I, have actually master's degrees. So we believe in education and experience and you know, uh, commitment to the job, but it all starts uh, at a young age, perhaps, like, like us at Four C's. Great, and Chief, uh, do you wanna talk a little bit more about why it's important uh, for you to have an educated police force out there on the streets of uh, Yarmouth? It, it really, it was, uh, became quite evident uh, during the 60s that policing needed to change. And the idea in Massachusetts was right in the forefront of doing that when identifying that we need educated police officers and they created an incentive in pay to get officers into education and the education of police officers exploded uh, in the early 70s right through the 80s and 90s and to where we are today that you hear now we're requiring 60 college credits just to take our exam Wow! Um, and we find that it, it creates a better balance when people get a, a rounded education of all different things they integrate with a lot of different types of uh, demographics that, that create a more rounded person and then we couple that with, with good training, uh, good experience, and follow it up with strong policy. And it all blends together to create a, a well-rounded police officer. Wonderful. So, Susie, you are working to try to get uh, at least some of the 900 graduates yes, to get together. Yes. An event is coming up on April 26th. Tell me a little bit about uh, this alumni event for the Criminal Justice Program. I would love to. Um, just want to mention that we are so proud of the criminal justice graduates and currently and since I'm sort of new to um, this, the college only two years or almost two years um, I have discovered through meeting with police officers and the kindness of the chiefs um, that three of the current chiefs sitting chiefs at this time are graduates of the criminal justice system obviously Chief Fredrickson and then Chief Guillemette out in um, Harwich, not in Harwich, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. Harwich. Harwich. Harwich, yes. He was in Sandwich, but now he's okay. Harwich. Yeah. And then uh, Chief uh, Dennis Woodside in Bourne. And I know that I've heard that there are uh, at least a handful, if not more, uh, gentlemen who have served as chiefs who are currently retired. So 
That's great, and yeah. it's a uh, great again really speaks to the program and speaks uh, to to uh, that local sense uh, we have here on Cape Cod. Right. So tell me about the event. Uh, it's again April yep. 26. Starts it's at 5:30. Thursday, 30. April 26th at 5:30. Uh, the invitations will be going out the very beginning of March. It's 5.30 to 7.30. We hope to get as many graduates back as we can to just enjoy being with each other and swapping stories. Uh, hopefully some of the retired faculty members will be there also. We are hope to give a shout out to the three current chiefs. And then also as a, a special um, announcement will be made that evening about a new scholarship for a criminal justice student at the college in honor of Judge James O'Neill mm. um, and mm. we're working on fundraising for that we have a, a gentleman who has been involved with the foundation and the college for many years and he's working on getting a group together to raise money for that scholarship and then we're uh, hoping to announce the, the beginning of that, that night. So exciting. So is the event being held at the college? Yes, it's going to be held in the LaRusso building, which is the technology building, in the solarium, which is on the second floor. And the information will be on the website about that. And the um, chief and deputy chief have both been extremely helpful and will help you know send the invitation when it's done electronically to members of their staff and and uh, Chief Fredrickson will also send that to the other chiefs um, so that they can send it to their staffs because I have some contact information but it could be from years ago um, I don't have many email addresses uh, people tend to not necessarily keep their contact information up to date so Right, that's, that's, think, that's a challenge. <laughs> I was a student at Four Seas in 1996, 97, mm -hmm. and my email address is totally different uh, than it was uh, yep. back then. My address, absolutely different. Phone number two. I yep. don't even think I had a cell phone in 1996. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly, and, and you, not just for the criminal justice uh, alumni, but all alumni all are alumni. urging them to go ahead and update their contact information. That's pretty easy to do on the college's website. Yes, you just go to the college's website, and as you're looking at the website, on the right hand side there's a section that says alumni and foundation and click on the alumni portion and then it's fairly uh, obvious where you can fill in your information great to I want update things fantastic so capecod.edu uh, just look for uh, the foundation and you'll be able to update your information so alumni go ahead and do it takes a second I'm gonna do it as soon as uh, we get um, off <laughs> thank the air you here. Sarah <laughs> for sure um, I wanted to talk a little I know we're focusing on alumni but I want to talk about career path because I think you know in here on Cape Cod we talk a lot about jobs we talk a lot about housing we talk a lot about a wage gap and a career as a police officer can be a very lucrative career you can make some pretty decent money here on Cape Cod and if you can get the education you need um, here at four C's you know maybe you can't afford to go off to a larger four-year school but you want to have a lucrative career and make a life here on Cape Cod I think that you know for people who are considering that it's a great career option so I wanted to talk just a little bit about getting into the criminal justice program and then um, you know obviously the two of you get so much fulfillment um, from your job so to encourage folks who might be considering um, this is a career path and talk about how you really can make a good life here on Cape Cod as a police officer Absolutely. You know, it's a noble profession. So it's really about service. And at the end of your career, you can look back and really know you made a difference. Whereas other jobs, you may not have that feeling. And it, you can make good salary. Uh, we're proud of that. And the officers deserve it. Um, so for Cape Codders, yeah, right down the street is this jewel. And in two years, you'll have your degree. And you could become a police officer. Remember, you still have to go to the police academy. So the college degree is just part of your training. Sure. But it's a great way to serve your community, make a difference, and, and make a good, good living for yourself and your family. Wonderful. And we talk a little bit about giving back, and I know that uh, you brought a couple of things with you, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about those. I know that you know you work so hard in getting the word out uh, to the members of the community. Great job with Facebook, with social media, and just really that community engagement portion of it. Um, so there's a couple of things that you have going on that I would love to uh, give yeah, you the opportunity to talk about. If you don't about. mind, yeah, real quick, sure. part of what we do is, is obviously we enforce the law, 
And we have two roles. One is to be the guardian of the community, but also a warrior when we need to be. Most of the time it's guardian. It's helping the mentally ill. It's helping homeless, people addicted, and helping, in, in my, my heart, a veteran. So thanks to uh, Ocean State Job Law and Massachusetts Military Foundation and my son's foundation, we have 27,000 uh, brand new winter coats. We've got one right here. Yeah, and uh, so thank you for letting us mention that. You're welcome. They're available at the police station. Any military family member or veteran deserves one. It's not that you may need it, but we're thanking you for your service. So you might not need it, but if you'd like to have a nice warm winter Just coat, you've got Just stop by the police station. Great. And the chief can explain another program real quick, perhaps why he's has a beard today. Oh, yes, yeah. of course, uh, Chief Fredrickson, and not freshly shaven like we're used uh, to seeing you. <laughs> yeah, this is it. He this doesn't is like it, it ladies um, and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm not a fan of beards, trust me. And, and our tradition and standards at the Yarmouth Police Department is that we do not wear facial hair such as beards. However, I challenge the, the officers to do a community policing event on each shift. What they came up with through a bunch of officers and Sergeant John Fallon was to do a beards for benefit, to allow uh, officers to grow beards for th a three month period uh, to raise money for Children's Cove Child Advocacy Center, uh, which is a, a great organization that is, is vital to helping children of sexual abuse and processing and uh, cases as well as giving support to families. So that's a great cause. So the idea was to grow beards for three months. They didn't expect me to say I would agree with that, <laughs> but I did. Uh, and each officer had to pay $100 to grow a beard. We had 31 officers uh, make their donation, including myself, but I was not going to grow one unless they come up with an additional five hundred dollars oh that's wonderful which they did do so uh, here it is <laughs> this is it it's uh, Looking good. it is what it is you know it's nothing uh it'll be coming off uh, the end of the month uh but we did allow officers to participate in the polar plunge for seniors which was another event yeah. last week uh, and if they participated in that, they could wear it for another month. So we had <laughs> yeah, we had okay. eight officers show up and take the dip. Uh, so that that was that. And, and I, we understand what you're saying as far as reaching out to the public. Mm. So what we do is serious, but it's also fun, and things like this help. And again, you you know, life is about helping others, and you can be proud of that. And one of the other things we're doing is a blood drive. Sure. So I wanted to mention that as well. Uh, the need for blood is constant. You know, you can't make blood, and there's people out there that need it every day. Mm. And we do a, a blood drive every year in my son's memory, and it's needed very badly right now because of the winter conditions. So on February 11th, if anybody could give blood, we'd appreciate that at YPD headquarters anytime that day. Well, I think it's a good pre-Valentine's Day thing, right? It's like Ooh. you think about blood, is, is it pumps your heart, it fuels your heart, you're full of love because of that blood. So maybe in honor of Valentine's Day, you can go with your sweetheart, you can go with your best friend and love donate it. some blood and give some love back to the community. <laughs> well said. Best way you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> and so again, uh, the alumni event, uh, getting together all, all of our uh, criminal justice grads from Cape Cod Community College, uh, April 26th. And if folks want to come to that event, uh, how do they uh, how do they do so? Can they just show up or do they have to register ahead of time? Um, we would prefer just for numbers for them to register. Register uh, the After the invitation goes out, obviously there will be a way to reply. Um, we are going to be asking for a $10 donation to help defray the costs of the evening. Um, but they'll, it, it'll be self-explanatory when the invitation goes out, which I said, I think I already said, will go out. Um, beginning of March. Wonderful. Yep. Well, thank you so much, uh, all of you, for joining me today. And uh, it was a really a pleasure speaking with some fellow 4Cs graduates <laughs> yes. and looking forward uh, to seeing uh, the alumni presence grow here on Cape Cod. Thank you, thank Sarah. You, Sarah. Thank, thank you all you. so much. My guest today is Susie Greenup, the coordinator of alumni engagement for the Cape Cod Community College Educational Foundation, Yarmouth Police Chief Frank Fredrickson, Yarmouth Police Deputy Chief Stephen Ixaros. And for Cape Media News, I'm Sarah Colvin.